By now, you might have seen some of the early release videos on the home pods from channels that are bigger than mine that covered the specs and the sound out of these. So instead of rehashing all that, I thought I'd use these new home pod second generations to share with you seven of my tips that will help you do more with your home pod. These tips work with the original home pod and the HomePod Mini. Now as we go through these tips, I'll talk about some of the features of this second generation HomePod. Apple did send these two out to me early to check out, but I haven't had them long enough to make a review video. I did pre-order the white and midnight one, so definitely subscribe to check out more videos on these when they get here. For the little bit of time that I've had with these, they do sound nice. Like the original one, for a small speaker, they can fill the room nicely. I have two of the original HomePods in my family room paired up to an Apple TV with Dolby Atmos and spatial audio. It fills out the space nicely. With the two I have coming in, I'm gonna pair them up with the Apple TV in here. It should sound great. This first tip is my biggest tip that I'm gonna give you right off the bat that's gonna open up so much more with these HomePods. It is personal request. When you set up a HomePod, you are gonna get the option to turn on personal request. And what that does is it recognizes your voice and allows you to take advantage of more integration with your Apple devices and services. For example, you can use Find Mine to locate your devices. You can add stuff to your calendars, create reminders, create notes, access your contacts, send messages directly from the HomePod using the messaging app. Now you might be concerned if you turn that feature on that others in the house will be able to hear your messages or make calls or have access to your information. Well, the good thing is it relies on recognizing your voice. And if it doesn't, it'll ask you who you are to confirm it. And if it still doesn't recognize you, it'll ask you to validate on your phone. I've had times where Siri hasn't recognized my voice and has asked me to confirm who I am. Now, another thing with personal requests, they only work if your phone's in the house. So once you're gone, even if someone had a recording of your voice asking to hear your messages, it wouldn't work. That's kind of scary. I don't know why that popped into my head. Hey Siri, what's the weather? today looks like it will be cloudy today hey siri, stop. daytime temp sometimes siri can be a bit loud and annoying like me at times no please i didn't think you were gonna agree with that at least be nice in the comments if you do with this next tip it can help you if siri is too loud in the room it's in you can always say hey siri speak at 20 percent volume i'll speak softer and siri will speak softer for you hey siri what's the weather today it's currently clear and 66 degrees. If you'd like to turn up the volume, you can say, hey Siri, speak at 75% volume. I'll speak louder. And I'll speak louder for you. Now this next tip, tip 2.5, it's a tip within a tip. If you don't wanna call up Siri, you can always just do a long press. What time is it? And then make your it's request. It's 45 p.m. And if it, for some reason you don't want to have Siri listening, you have two options to turn off the microphone. You can use voice and say, hey Siri, stop listening. And you'll get the You'd confirmation. Like to turn off, hey Siri, right? Yes. Okay. I turn hey Siri off. You can go into the app under the HomePod settings and flip that on or off. If you want to turn it back on using voice, you can do a long press, start listening. Okay. I turn hey Siri on. And it'll start listening. With this next tip, you can talk to people throughout the house using intercom and announcements. And the way that works is, hey Siri, announce that I'm going to be working on my video. Okay, intercom to everyone in my home. I'm going, I'm going to be going working, to be working, on, working my video. on my video. Whoa, that's a lot of them that reacted. Now, if I wanted to respond back, I could say, hey Siri, intercom living room is saying, we'll be quiet while you're recording. And here, we'll be quiet while you're recording. 
What's great about Intercom is you could set it up so that it goes across all the different Apple devices that your family members have. So there's no excuses for anyone in the house to say they didn't hear you. You can also set it up so that Intercom announcements only work when you're at home. That way you don't get them while you're out and about. Now another tip that's not part of this list but is important is to make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see the rest of these videos. After you finish this video, make sure to check out my 10 everyday uses for the HomePod. That's gonna give you some great information. Also, come join us on Saturdays for the YouTube live stream or come by our Amazon live streams during the week. The HomePods are great for listening to music, whether it's just one of them or if you pair them up as a pair. I actually use two of them in our family room and they fill up the space nicely. I'm excited to get these two set up paired with an Apple TV in here. Um, Dolby Atmos out of these is pretty impressive for a little speaker. Well, some of the things that are supposed to help the sound out of these full-size home pods are the fact that the five speakers are angled up so that it doesn't bounce the sound off of surfaces it also uses room sensing to bounce sound off the room and use the microphones built into this to determine the shape of the room another one I didn't realize is it has an accelerometer in it so that when you pick it up you move it to a different location it will then run that room sensing again to calibrate to where it's at in the room now. The home pods are great for listening to music throughout the house. And with this next tip, you can listen across multiple home pods. So right now I have something playing in my living room on the home pod. If I want to bring this into the mix, I can say, hey Siri, add what's playing to this home pod. Now it's going to. On it. Now also that. playing in here. So here we go. It's playing in here. I have volume control on this speaker. And what I can do is I can actually say, hey Siri, stop playing on the living room midnight second gen HomePod. And now it's gonna stop it in that room. Stopping in the living room and midnight second general. And it's only playing here. Very convenient to be able to add HomePods in and out. So if you're moving throughout the house, the only problem with it is you're limited to only six HomePods. And that means even if you're in a pair, that counts as two HomePods. Now the way you can play stuff on third-party services is using this next tip called Handoff. Here, I'm gonna play one of my audio books. And what I can do is bring it over and, and it will pass over to the HomePod. Once it's Rouse over it here, this seizes upon a gentle I can play or pause, control the volume, all that from the home pod. Yeah. Now if I want to bring it back, if a man I comes bring to the, the home pod over untouched and I can transfer it back. Now what's great about this is it also works with phone calls. So if you're walking into the house on the phone, you just touch it, the call switches over. And if you want to move it back again, touch it and the call's back on the phone. Coming soon to these new HomePods is sound detection. What that'll do is listen for smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms. If either of those is detected, you'll get an alert to let you know. With this next tip, you could use your HomePods to help you fall asleep. If you didn't know, here's a list over here of ambient sounds that you could call up on the HomePod. It's great, you just ask Siri for the one you want and it'll play throughout the night until you turn it off. Here's the ocean waves I like these now recent update that Apple did is you can incorporate ambient sounds into automations maybe you have a nighttime automation and you want to turn it on or in the morning when at a certain time of day or your alarm goes off you can have them turn off right now let's have some waves and a nap hey Siri lights off now there are a couple other new updates to the HomePod. There is a temperature and humidity sensor. Now what's cool with iOS 16.3, not only does it activate it in these, the HomePod mini has a temperature and humidity sensor that gets activated. You can use those sensors to trigger automations or just ask what the temperature is in the room. Hey Siri, what's the temperature in the room? It ranges from 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 71 degrees Fahrenheit in the kitchen. Another update to these full-size HomePods that the original didn't have is Thread. So with these, you can use them as a Thread border router, something that you've been able to do with the HomePod Mini. And Thread, if you're not familiar with it, creates a nice strong mesh network between your devices to allow them to talk to each other. This next tip definitely helps out with the smart home. One of the best places to start your smart home off is with SmartLock. 
light. Now when you buy a bunch of smart bulbs, it becomes kind of a pain to remember the name of each one or having to say it. Well, you don't need to. Instead, what you can do is say, hey Siri, lights on. And Siri's gonna know which lights to turn on. Now the way I was able to do that is when you set up your HomePod, you assign it to a room. Well, once it's assigned to a room, any lights that are in that same room, when you say lights on or off, it'll know which ones to turn on or off. These tips are helpful, but there is so much more these devices can do. To learn about that, check out this video over here. There's some great information. It's gonna help you really do a lot more with these. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.